Oh, yeah, I'm recording to you. You say you can record now? Yeah, I'm on record now. All right, bro. All right, man. What's up, Nathan? So, man, before we get into this discussion, bro, I want you to tell me about your uh, what you just accomplished in the last few weeks. Well, I've just been ordained, so now I'm a Gnostic priest for the Gnostic Catholic Union. I'm just starting my own group right called the Parish of St. Sophia. That's on Facebook currently. And eventually I'm going to do some in-person lessons at, say, the one of the local libraries and maybe even my house, stuff like that. And just research as always. Oh, oh. Yeah, right on, right on. <clears throat> so let me ask you, man. So now that, that you have this achievement, what is your idea of what God is? Because you said Catholic, right? Well, Gnostic, but Gnostic Catholic know. Union. So Catholic means universal. Catholicism yeah, right, right, stole right. the name sort of thing. Oh, see, see, there you go. See, go ahead. So so talk about that real quick and then and tell me like why is it that uh what what is your idea of what God is and why is there so many different beliefs and understandings of God, especially because of you thinking of it from the Gnostic side of the of the the views well with so many views of god we have countless different religions spiritual experiences and at the end of the day we have our own interpretations and our own understanding of what god is of our own spiritual nature and what we regard as visions so this in turn would also vary so thus we have various interpretation of god and gods but i like the saying of carl Jung. We are the universe experiencing itself. And Carl Jung was a Gnostic. Now, this means like hack a tree. It's God. Kiss a puppy. It's God. Love yourself. Love your son, your daughter. That love that you have is God. But we live in a mathematical frequency domain. So domain. And everything is energy. Everything is geometrical. Um, geometrical. Mm. And we find this in the earth, the universe itself, our fingertips. We find patterns. And with this, everything being connected, we have in Gnosticum, uh, so Gnosticism, we have here in this book from the Nagamari, I'll quickly quote, I just uploaded it, I think right, it was right. yesterday, the tripartite tractate. It's got the father is singular while being many, for he is the first and he is unique. Though without being solitary, how else could he be the father? For from the word father, it follows that there is a son, that singular one who is of so is the only father, in fact, is like a tree that has a trunk, branches and fruit. So this means that we're all emanations of God. So single minds making up the cosmic mind of God. In Gnosticism, some views have the father as the source of everything and the emanation or the power of creation is Barbello, the emanation of God being masculine of them. So mother, father, and that's reflected again in all of us. So as so above, so below. So the power of co-creation being reflected in us. And even when we dream, it's a spiritual realm or a gateway or even a dimension of accessing your own personal domain. So this personal connection with God. And when I go back to geometrical patterns, we find this in our brain. We find this in fruit, the universe itself. And this being said, we didn't invent mass. We discovered it. So everything being mathematical, this meaning that we're eternal living minds, not really a body. So again, being individual minds experiencing itself, so God experiencing itself is the Gnostic view of things. It's similar to with Hinduism, with Brahma. So God being you, me, everything around us. So with Christianity, the view of God being everywhere at once, seeing everything we do, the only way that can physically be possible if God is all life itself. What do you mean all God, uh, like, that last part that you just said, what do you mean by that? Well, the only way that God can be everywhere at once and experience everything at once means it's all of us together, all life itself. So everywhere at once, otherwise it mm -hmm. physically can't be. So even with space, time and dimension, like it's still a part of this domain. So that source of creation itself with energy. So again, information being transferred and restored and reused, that goes into the concept of, reincarnation evolution so this presence that we continually live in is god itself experiencing itself in that notion 
Yeah, because see, I, <clears throat> I was just listening. <clears throat> Excuse me. I was just listening to the radio station yesterday and they had this pastor on there and uh, he was speaking and saying that, you know, you got to look for, look to God for help. But when he was saying, looking to God for help, he was sometimes implying looking for something outside of the person. And then sometimes he was talking about looking in within. Like, of course, like how Jesus said, look within yourself. And, and I can't remember the, the exact scripture that, that talks about it, but it's many. Uh, yeah. Um, looking within. And I want to know, like, because, you know, some of the new age people, they think they're gods. Like, I mean, there's nothing wrong with saying that because when people do create life. People do, you know, shape their, their, the, 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 their uh i guess their 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 paths in life you know they're they're responsible i mean you may not be exactly what you want to be but you are in control for the most part of how you end up in life for the most part in some in most cases this is not always 100 percent, of course there's always that one percent that i always talk about but it, i mean we we are in at the end of the day in in the eyes of civilization and civilized eyes once you hit a certain age you are no longer able to blame anybody else you are only to blame yourself and you have to look in within yourself to become whatever it is that you may consider what may, may be a great person because being a great person that's that's subjective we all have our different views of what a great person can be you know, a great person can be as simple as somebody being there to listen and talk to you. Another great person will tell you that you're, you know, um, messing up if you're messing up, you know, and you don't, and, and there's certain elements that you may like and dislike. And, you know, that would, that's what will shape what your idea of a great person is. But, you know, I, I want to know because we go to, we go, and when I say we, I say collectively as people, we go to church or our mosques or our synagogues or whatever the case may be. We go there and we worship a God. Okay. I was just having some discussions with people yesterday and um, every, most of every ancient civilization that I know of, the Mesopotamians, the Mesoamericans, um, some of the uh, Native Americans, the Greeks, you know, so on and so forth, they all had gods. <clears throat> and somebody mentioned that uh, that it wasn't always religion, though. Do you think you can have religion without a god? Well, it's like Buddhism. They don't so much have a god, but they see everything as spirit in a sense. The Aboriginals here in Australia, they didn't have a God, but they worshipped the land around them. So it depends on your interpretation of God as well. Some people can be spiritual and see all life <laughs> self as God as well, and they claim they're not religious as well. Yeah, it goes back to your idea of what a God is, right? Mm -hmm. You're, it, it, it's all in the individual understanding of what a God is. And they ha and that's why there's so many people who have religion like such as let's just say Christianity you all have a group of Christians in a room but they won't all agree on how to be a true Christian because at the end of the day when you're uh you know um worshiping a religion a god you're doing it with the, the with the most you know truest way you know the most upright way the most you know respectful way you know what i mean you're, you're doing it so to be a true christian you know you can't get the idea of, of a true christian from five different people who say they are christians they're all going to have their own idea and um i brought this <clears throat> that pastor up from yesterday i can't remember his name but he also talked about um don't read the Bible 
from the Old Testament. Start at uh, Gospels, Mark, and Luke. I think that's what he said. I'm sure. I'm not. I, I can't remember exactly, but I remember Mark, Matthew, and Luke. I'm not. I, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, I Matthew, said Mark, Luke, and John. Most Christians will tell you to start there. Why did first. he say gospel then? I want to know why he said gospel then. Yeah, gospels. Matthew, mean? Mark, Luke, and John. So that's the gospels, and the rest is no, just biblical scripture. No, no, no. No, I want to say why he said re- say gospels, and then he said Matthew, Luke, and I can't remember. There's another one that he said. Um, it could be the letters of Paul. Anyway, I can't remember. Um, <clears throat> I remember him mentioning like Deuteronomy and some other stuff. But anyway, he said not to. <clears throat> he said not to go and read the Old Test. Don't when you go read the Bible, don't go and read the Bible at the Old Testament. Read the Gospels, Matthew, Luke, and what's the other one? John. John, yeah, Matthew, yeah. Luke, and John. And there's another and one that he said that I can't remember what he's. Okay, I, I I think it was I think it was probably I think it was probably Mark. I don't remember. Anyway, he said he said a lot of different things. But anyway, and I always get those confused anyway. Like I man, I get those so confused because it's like information is everywhere. Like you're like Matthew here, Deuteronomy there, Luke here. <laughs> and it's just, to me personally, it gets really really confused. And I think it's because I'm trying to remember so much stuff from different uh, versions of it that I get really confused. But anyway. Um, he he said, "Don't read it from the old. Don't read it from the Old Testament. Read the Gospels." And then he re- said, "Read something else that I can't remember." And I don't know why. Um, I don't know why exactly he said to read that one either. But the point is, is that uh, I know personally that many people haven't read the Bible from front to end. They haven't read it from you know the front cover all the way to the back cover. They've picked certain parts in the Bible to read. Um, parts that make them feel good right you know um and And pretend the nasties aren't there (laughs) say what and pretend the nasties aren't there cherry picking right 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 so and and that's basically what i was getting at because when you go to the old testament the old testament is really jacked up bro like (laughs) the stuff that people had to go through according to what god's plan was was you know that to me that it's really messed up you know, and I always ask people, you know, you know, they because they they get they they say God and then they say Jesus. Okay, I know when I read the book from uh, City of God from Mary of Agreda, uh, God created Himself through the Virgin Mary, um, and He was, and for some reason in the Bible it says His Son. But I don't, it's just very confusing because some people believe Jesus is not God, that he's not an incarnation of God. And some people believe that Jesus was just a regular man, right? So there's always so that, that confusion right there. And whether that is the case or not, I know that Jesus is definitely different than God in the, in the Holy Bible. You know, the Old Testament is a, the, 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 the person that we're supposed to worship in the, in the Old Testament is totally different than the people that 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 jesus than than the person jesus is yes right? that's why many christians yeah. would reject that idea of god as well but you know there's uh something that jesus said that many christians ignore or don't know the concept of and that's when jesus said that you are gods and this is also mentioned in the bible yeah. but he also says that we would die like mortal men because we're limited in this physical domain so yeah. Basically, so basically with the minds, that goes to the concept of reincarnation. We have to understand if Jesus' teachings aligns with Gnosticism and the Essenes, where modern Christianity doesn't. The scholar and even um, journalist um, Graham Hancock, but the um, scholar Barty Ehrman said that if an ancient Christian time traveled into our time and learned about the history of Christianity in the church, he would be appalled and he would be horrified and Say if a Christian of our time read a biblical text of back then, they would call that stuff heresy. So we're in a very contradiction here of religion. This is why two have not much in common. The reason that priests tell you to read the New Testament first, and they don't even realize this, it's because the oral tradition is passed on from Gnosticism, and that's from Marcion rejecting the Old Testament. And his first Christian Bible didn't have an Old Testament. It was just the biblical scripture, like the New Testament, basically. So yeah, that see- oral tradition is passed on. 
See, man, like it, it confuses me because people will say God is he's, he's, he's a good father. You know, God told an individual to kill his son. I'm not going to give details in there because I want people to read the Bible and see what am I actually saying when they hear this. An individual was told to kill their son, okay, by God, hmm. okay? Jesus never thought about killing anybody. Am, am I wrong? Like, he was like, he was, he 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 wanted everybody to live a happy life, basically. You're totally correct. Right? Did, did he want to go, did he ever go to war? No, or anything yeah like he never he never went to war he never you know but fought he, oh, he never... whipped a few people that was in the synagogue ones that the corrupt of the church because they wouldn't let say anyone into the temple unless they were jewish so they were stopping samaritans from entering and they were charging people top dollar to convert the currency and they were sacrificing animals because he was an essene christian sorry, mm. not christian sorry an essene jew they rejected animal sacrifices and they were open to multiple mm -hmm. different Jews. They believed that the temple should be open to all. So he's gone there, whipped the you know other Pharisees and threw the tables on the floor and let all the animals go. So that's the only yeah. time you'll see of Jesus of conflict. Other than that, he was always peace and love. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like that's the opposite of what's in the Old Testament. The Old Testament was, hey, we we need to, and it had, and it had to end up with somebody dying. Like it had to, and, and that's why I say, like, you know, um, when I was younger, I I was that person that picked parts of of uh, what I read in the Bible because I was always told that if if you read any part of the Bible, you can say you read the Bible because not every part is meant for you to be read at that moment. Like you're not supposed to pick up the Bible and read it like a book. There's is there you're supposed to be guided towards the Bible, that, or at least that's how I was told growing up, right? And that and that's what I did. I I would pick up the book and I would read it, you know, a couple of books here, or a couple of pages here and there, and I was like, oh, I knew what I was talking about. But I was only read stuff that I was always told to read about. What I was what I was always, you know, uh, reminded in church. And then as I got older, I was like, man, maybe I need to read the 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 the, the Bible from the front page to to the back like a regular book but it was so thick and the letters were so small I was like man I know it's going to take a long time to read this book but when after I started reading it I started noticing something I noticed that you know for one the timeline the Abrahamic faith it came around 2000 BC right um in Mesopotamia right and what I know about ancient Mesopotamia is that that's around the Sumerian Akkadian time frame, right? And that's the same individuals that believe in the Sumerians called them the Anuna and the Akkadians called them the Anunnaki. These are their gods. If the Abrahamic faith was around that same time, I, I wonder, you know, which God that Abraham choose to worship from that group of individuals because there wasn't any other gods but them around in that area those were the only gods in mesopotamia at that time frame that i know of you know well at that time there wasn't um, really an aramaic faith um a canaanite faith yeah because the jews weren't around back then so the notion of abraham most likely was borrowed from the sumerian stories or possibly a canaanite poem but and the canaanites were influenced by the sumerians but that's what i'm saying the the Abrahamic faith or the time frame is around 2000 BC, give or take. Okay, okay, that's yeah. around the Sumerian and Akkadian time frame. The Sumerians was the lower part of ancient Mesopotamia, and the Akkadians was the upper part yeah. of ancient Mesopotamia. And they came around the same time. Matter of fact, when they found the cuneiform tablets, they didn't. Uh, there's still argument whether the cuneiform tablets that they found that they say are Sumerian are actually Sumerian, and they still don't know if. They actually think some people still argue that they're Akkadian. So they're still not 100 percent agreeance on on this stuff. You know, it's only, you know, what somebody's ideas, because when you read some of these books from like Samuel Neil Kramer, they actually talk about it in the book like there's no real um, uh, there's always still an argument like they still don't know if the Sumerians are who the Sumerians are and the Akkadians are who they say they are, like they don't know who actually came first or who came second. I mean, they, they know when the uh, Akkadian empire came. 
Okay. But as far as, you know, the culture of the Acadians, because, you know, you can have a culture before you have a civilization, you know? So they don't know if those people, those people were there before, beforehand. But um, I wonder, you know, because I think I, I, I really think about it. What 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 God did, did Abraham choose to worship from that from those set of gods from the Anuna to the Anunnaki from the from the Sumerians slash Akkadians like which one did he actually pick because in that area it was only the Anuna slash the Anunnaki and when I say this I don't mean the extraterrestrials that came from a different planet to mine gold on planet Earth I'm just saying these were these gods that are actually worshipped in ancient Mesopotamia, like there's actually cuneiform tablets that talk about them. There's actually, you know, written records and artifacts and depictions and, you know, all kinds of other things, pottery that that's about them. And nobody knows exactly who they are. And just like you said, you know, the Sumerians, they, their stories are just like what some of what you can find in the Holy Bible, not everything, but they, you do have the flood story. You have the creation of humans and life and stuff like that and animals and all this other stuff. You have a type of a garden and stuff like that. Um, so you have all these same similarities, but um, <clears throat> when it comes to God, okay. Cause we, we talked, you, you gave me your description of God. And of course your description of God is different than um, many guys that I have. I are that I've heard. I don't really have a description of a God because I've, I've read so many different descriptions that it's hard for me to put it together in words. So I'll just say that there's something out there that helped create what we have today on this planet. Okay. I'm not sure about the universe because I don't exactly know how the universe works, but I do know that the planet has to be in a certain area, which I believe is, they call it what the Goldilocks zone. For, for where the planet is at. I, I don't know. I can't remember what exactly they call it, but it, it's, it, the planet has to be in a certain area in our, uh, in, 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 I guess, uh, in our universe. I, I get the concept, yes, but I don't yeah. know the name, but I know the concept, yeah, okay. yes. Yeah, so it, it has to be perfect. So whatever that God is, and we're made out of all kinds of different types of things like atoms and you know, all different types of bacteria and you know, everything plays a part of creating our body. So obviously without certain things, we like, we couldn't survive with some of the parasites on our skin. Like our body wouldn't be able to survive. Like there's certain parasites or, and I don't know if it's parasites or bugs, certain types of bugs. I know certain, certain types of things that's not, that that's supposed to be on your skin that helps your skin. I, I don't even remember what it's called. It's just like a certain, um, uh, uh, like you know how you got um like, microorganisms. Uh, yeah, there you go. Something like that. Like for with your stomach, you got certain stuff for your stomach. Like if you eat yeah. yogurt, you can put certain uh stuff in your stomach to help your stomach and stuff. Yeah, you just, so I I just can't remember the words right now for some. Well, reason. even with the word matter, that comes from the word matter, which in turn comes from the word mother. So again, mm-hmm. that even goes back to the old idea of goddess and <clears throat> so gods and goddesses. So even with your question about. Abraham, if he was a real person, he would have been worshipping El, and his Sumerian equivalent to El was Dinga, and the Akkadian version of that would be Elon. E-L-Y-O-N? Is that who you're talking about? I-L-U-M, or I think there's different variations of the name. Yeah, I, I, I think I know what you're talking about. Um, yeah, yeah, that's what I'm saying, like, it's obvious that Anuna slash the Anunnaki's it's important you know you have the different variations you hear me talk about the different variations and stuff like that hmm. but and you showed me the um the books uh the books that you had that you just showed me what were they called the uh the nakamadi had, library yeah i had a second you have version two, of it, lost you have, you have two different versions of it and they have two different ideas of what that what they believe in that in those scriptures right yep two different versions of translations so, so even yeah, trans- some have, but, well, translations by different scholars. Yeah, and they both have, and they both they they both have their expertise in that, expertise in that field, right? Yeah. So, who do you pick to believe, right? That's that's my point. When I when I when I whenever I have these discussions with people, I say you can't just believe one person. Hmm. You know, you have to believe 
the person that you may possibly believe at that moment, because that's what, that's all you read at that moment. Then you have to research the person that disagrees with them and figure out why, why they disagree with that person. You see what I'm saying? Or read a different version of it. Like I have two or three, uh, let's see. I think I have two or three different versions of the Mahabharata and they both in the, and I, and I think for like, I did it for like two weeks. I think it's like a week or two. I don't remember. But I went like page by page to try to figure out what was said and what, what was the, the translations and stuff. And there was a lot of different, you know, words we used for different things. Like I found that myself. So I could just imagine, you know, on, on, you know, cuneiform tablets, everybody having their own idea of what's written in the cuneiform tablets, you know what I mean? 100%, 100%. Like, I'm sure you've heard the notion that God works for us as well. Yeah, 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 I heard of it. Mm -hmm. Well, even with that thing, that goes back to with the saying, your kind action can be someone else's miracle. So again, that's connection of god that's god within us so that goes into the idea of gnosticism even the idea of prayer the communication of god that's a personal relationship with the divine which again would go back to gnosticism and before the word gnosticism hermetic so that could be found in ancient egypt even mesopotamia itself so no matter what we've always had different interpretations of said beliefs and religions god's being reflected in us but also being experienced in, in us as well. So we even have that concept of spirit guides with ancestor worship, with our ancestors being one with the, with the gods or being one with the universe, being one with mother nature, again, returning to its source. So again, with this idea of God being everything at once, being everywhere at once, that's the only way it can sort of make sense. And that means that's all of us individually, collectively making up this cosmic experience of information being processed. But that would also go into us living as the mineral kingdom, the cellular life. So cellular, bionic, whatever that is, kingdom, mm. um, the animal kingdom, etc. So we were lived through all these different incarnations, experiencing itself, seeking higher levels of experience. You see, I just, I'm just trying to get an idea, a grasp or at least a, a, a description of who God is. I mean, I get these ideas, you know, that he, you know, he's everywhere. And he's powerful. He knows what you're doing, you know, almost like the Santa Claus thing. You know? Yeah. <laughs> That's why I like the yeah. idea of Gnosticism because it's, we are the absolute and the all. So us being experienced means it doesn't, this supernatural God interfering in our affairs doesn't, exist in our eyes we see that as a more of a man-made event but rather we are the experience so escaping ignorance or evolving so even when you go into new age ideas of higher level beings interdimensional beings that again goes into the accessing our own personal domain so again that goes into frequency energy our thoughts so our thoughts create the reality that we live in so everything's up to our own interpretation but ultimately, I see us as, yeah, the absolute and the all. We are the experience. So you are your own experience living your life. So the way you see the universe is your own interpretation is how you're living it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That makes sense. That makes sense. I just, like I said, I'm just trying to figure out, you know, who God is. You know, I'm on that journey. That's why I do what I do. You know, some people are happy and content with what they believe mm. and and ha most of them uh, most of the ones that i know at least haven't read but one book and when i say one book the only book they read was the holy bible you know they don't care who enoch is you know they don't care about the life of jesus you know and when i say the life of jesus that there's actually books that i was just telling you about the um, book set that i have the life of jesus that are that come from the visions of um venerable Ann emmerich i think that's what her name was and then i got the ones from from mary of agrita for uh from the virgin mary so you, you know there's books outside the holy bible that actually have you know additional stories more in-depth stories about these individuals because the one that i have about the virgin mary it's a four volume set book right and um 
it, it's basically the uh, the beginning of when God chose the Virgin Mary to be his uh, his wife in heaven and then his his mother on earth when he came into human form. And then it goes all the way to like the end in, in, in the times, I guess you can say like, but it's actually a history of the Virgin Mary and it's a four volume set and I'm rereading it now. And then, like I said, there, they also have one that has a vision that, that that's from the, um, for the, the life of Jesus and me and you, we've done a discussion with Robert Price, Dr. Robert Price about Jesus. And he gave us his idea of, um, what he understands of Jesus. So, you know, to me, it just gets to the point, like, and, and these were through visions, okay? Both of these, the one with Jesus was through visions and the one through the Virgin Mary was through visions, okay? So, you know, and if you believe in prophets and you believe in the Bible that people got messages from angels and God and from God himself, you know, why wouldn't you believe the 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 same thing that came from these these um these uh uh catholic nuns you know what i mean well that all goes back to the beginnings of the roman church and the catholics and the orthodox because when i mentioned before the catholics still in the name which means universal orthodoxy means the correct ones basically so in other words for christian orthodoxy would be dogmatic tradition or biblical scripture chosen under authority so because of that notion rejecting everything else that notion has stayed so that's why i see christians rejecting everything else and only doing this because that one continuous notion of this authorized version when we had multiple different scriptures that yeah. were being retranslated and then they were forbidden to be translated people were forbidden to write their own and even back in the day that's how yeah. they were writing these texts they were getting them from visions and then later on they would slap a name onto them you know yep. Yeah, and that's exactly what it was. The one from uh, Mary of Agreta or Greta, I don't exactly know how to say her, her name, but um, the books, the book, the visions that she got, she says that she wrote the book set um, uh, one time and she destroyed them. And then they made her do it again. The, you know, the Pope at the time made her do it. The All uh, the, uh, the Catholic priests you know, all the hierarchy people over there, they, they made her redo it and they still hold it as a valuable book, book set today. Like they recommend people to read it. It's a literal life story of, of the Virgin Mary. You know, we and actually have a story visit. of Virgin Mary as well. Um, an ancient scripture. Um, I've forgotten the title. I think it could be the proto gospel of James, maybe, but it goes into detail of Mary's life of her birth and uh, her being raised as a basically some would say a temple prostitute, but it wasn't what yeah, you think then. So basically what, she was made to yeah, be a yeah. virgin and married off to Joseph. And Joseph this time was an right. old widower in this story. And this is rejected from the Bible. This is an ancient Christian manuscript. It's like the story of Jesus' childhood. That itself is older than the so-called birth of the major story that's in the Bible. So yeah. we have many interpretations. It does It does say that in, a, in the book, how she was chosen to work at a temple and if you study the history, women that worked at the temple, they were considered considered temple prostitutes. They that's literally what their title was. Yeah, because I was a temple the prostitute. Yes, that's exactly what they were. And she was there to she was sent there to work there. I can't remember exactly what age, but she was she was an adult. She was a child when she had to work there. And then she was married off and sold to Joseph. Matter of fact there was a group of individuals, including Joseph in that group of individuals who were trying to persuade the priest by any means necessary to buy Mary. Hmm. They were there to buy her, to purchase her as a product, like, like a product. And of course, Joseph won. And uh, I, I can't remember how old he was, but he was a lot older than her. He was definitely older than her. he was. Also, he was definitely an adult when when he when she was betrothed. Is it betrothed? Yeah, her? I think that's the word. Yeah. Betrothed to her. So. Um, uh, I know. And, and what's crazy is when you read that book set, it says that um, he was about he was planning to leave 
the Virgin Mary because he found out she was pregnant and he didn't really notice it until the fifth month. And he, he already had questions before it, but he had made up his mind. I believe it was around the fifth month where he decided to leave. And then he had a vision when he went to sleep because he was like, he went to go take a, take, go take a nap. To, and he was going to wake up at midnight and leave. And instead of leaving, he stayed because he had a vision when he took that nap. And God, uh, God, I guess God sent Gabriel, I think it was Gabriel, down to send him a message about why the Virgin Mary is pregnant. So uh, God told the Virgin Mary to keep it a secret until um, until he said so. And when when uh <laughs> but see this is the thing joseph had this dream and had this this vision right before he before he left now before he they before you know in the book mary of agreed to write in the book about how he had this dream she says that he basically has a conscience and what she says is that he he wanted to make sure that she was okay that he was giving some of her he was giving some money away so that way, or giving his money to somebody, I can't remember who. Yeah, so that so she way will be dishonored or be stoned to death. Yeah, exactly. Yes, yes, yes. And to take care of the child and stuff like that. So he he wanted to make sure that he was just sad because he was depressed. Like the way the words that they used, and he was depressed. He was like, dang, I didn't, you know, my, my, my wife is pregnant and I and I didn't have no sex. They actually, she actually uses the word infidelity in her. He was like, I, I don't, I can't believe my wife has did this infidelity because all i look at her is pureness he 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 always looked at her as pure even after she was pregnant he looked at her as pure but then you know after you know she couldn't hide it anymore he decided he was like i said he was supposed to leave but he didn't leave because he had that vision and then he stayed and he worshiped he actually uh asked mary for forgiveness because he was ashamed and humiliated on how he treated her because he he didn't know that it was God himself that got that that was in her in her womb. Hmm. So when you hear that, what do you what the, how does that play with your concept and idea of who God is? Well, because I've also looked at a lot of history, I see a bit of a beautiful history, well, a story into this, a bit of a dark one, but also a bit of beauty out of it. And that there's Jews that believe that Jesus was the son of a Roman soldier and that Mary was raped. And if that's the case, then he turned his life into something beautiful instead of something, you know, harmful and hurtful. But even with the story of the virgin birth, some before that whole concept, the Essene Jews, the Ebonites, the Nazareans, they believed that Jesus was adopted by God during his baptism with John the Baptist. So the mm. adoption vision belief came before that. And then the idea of the virgin birth story actually came from the Gnostics, and that was the soul was born of a virgin, but everyone's born of sex, and that means Jesus included. So that's the idea of divine feminine being the son of the Holy Spirit and God. So Holy Spirit being the mother. So again, the whole notion of the goddess was removed out of that notion. So I see the story as us being God in manifest form. So what we do with our lives, whether it be good or bad, we can be the angels and we can be the demons. So that inner goodness is what I reflect as God, as Gnosticisms teach that God is all good. And our inner goodness is our connection to our divine spark, so the God within us. All right, all right. Let's see, it's, it's, it's interesting you said, you know, we, we mentioned, talk about the prostitute, you know, Jesus, um, well, not even just Jesus, uh, with God, when you look at God, when you look at the, 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 the way Mary was supposed to hide her pregnancy from Joseph, hmm. you know, I, you know, if I'm think of it from modern times, if I'm looking at it right now in my eyes and what I understand today. Why would there need to be something? Why would you need to hide that? Why not let that person know ahead of time? Hmm. So that way that, that, that they're aware of what's going on. You already chose Mary 
to be your wife, regardless. You, that, from what I understand, when I read that book, God knew ahead of time who mm-hmm. was going to be the woman to bring Jesus into the world. And if you knew that and you knew who her husband was, you know, we, you know, we, you know, with all the cheating and lying and all this stuff that's going on in this world, you know, people re- uh, imitate what they love and people love God. So when I, and what I mean by that is God was the first to have, tell somebody not to let somebody else know that they're pregnant, their significant other, the person that was supposed to, you know, be there for them, love them, you know, honor them, you know, take care of them, you know, because at that time, Joseph had to do everything. You know, and it's obvious that Joseph didn't have any relationship, that type of relationship with Mary, because he would have never questioned her being pregnant in the first place. You know, if he had that type of relationship with her. And even with customer yeah. being married, the first night you're married, it's usually sex that first night, you know, especially back in those days. And even with kings, they have a ceremony. They would have all their gathering watching them for their first night to be there as a witness that they conceived. So, you know, but, so. but that's what I'm saying. But that's what I'm saying. Joseph would have never questioned Mary being pregnant in the first place. If he had that type of relationship with her. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? Somewhere like in the I Bible said, it, as well. It, it, I'm sorry, cut your tar, right? it mentions that the Pharisees that challenged Jesus Basically, it's in a way of saying, at least we know our father is. But what they've said is, is at least we're not a son of a Samaritan. So that yeah. idea can go back to that Roman soldier because some say he's of Samaritan influence. Another one was, um, oh, I forgot the words. I've, I, put, I got on my channel, I mentioned what influence he was, what, where he actually comes from. I think it could be Phoenician, Phoenician influence. So, yeah. Yeah, yeah but that's, that's what I'm saying. Like, it, 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 to me, when I look at when I when I read the Bible, I don't I I don't I try not to read the Bible literally. I try to picture it, of course, you know, like because I'm trying to follow it like a story, basically, and because uh, that's how I'm I'm interpreting it. I'm not reading it like a poem, like it's supposed to be, uh, like it was originally, I guess. So I'm I'm reading it and I'm I'm trying to picture it. So when I read, you know. Um, stuff like uh, the Garden of Eden. We talking about God. Well, it is said that nobody's seen God face to face, right? That's what that's what is that's what most people say believe, right? Even though we have contradictions throughout the Bible, um, one of my favorite contradiction is um, the Garden of Eden. Now, from my understanding, the Garden of Eden is on planet Earth, right? It's literally on planet Earth. It's in Mesopotamia somewhere. We don't know exactly where, but they say it's in Mesopotamia. Some people believe Garden of Eden is in ancient Egypt. Some people believe it's in, you know, uh, it was Atlantis. Some people believe it was in North America somewhere. I mean, everybody has their own idea where the Garden of Eden is, but what's represented in the Holy Bible, we know it's in Mesopotamia, right? Hmm. So uh, when Adam and Eve ate the from the tree of knowledge, right? Whatever fruit it was, whatever they ate, whatever the case may be, we don't know. I mean, every there's different representations. I mean, especially the one with the apple. When they ate from the tree of knowledge, they became aware of their nakedness, basically. And what I mean by nakedness is that they didn't they knew that they they weren't they had no clothes on. They were there was something about them that even though, and this is where it's going to come in interesting because I'm bringing it up. Even though that God, they 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 know who God was. They seen God before. How do I know they seen God? Because when they became aware, they heard God walking and talking through the Garden of Eden. That means he was in physical form. That means he was making noise. That means he was making some type of noise where they could hear him walking, right? And they went to go hide behind the bush. Now, when they hid behind the bush, God was saying, hey, Adam, hey, Eve, where are you? Blah, blah, blah. Come here, come here. I got to talk to you, blah, 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 whatever. They eventually came from behind in that bush and saw them covering themselves up. So, of course, you know, Adam probably had both his hands covering his genitals. 
and Mary pro- or Mary uh, Eve probably had one hand covering her her lower part and covering one hand arm covering her breast, right? And he looked at him, and the first thing God noticed is why in the hell are they covering themselves up? Why ain't they? Why they? Why they not showing me everything? Why they gotta hide their, you know, their private areas, basically, right? Mm-hmm. And that's how he found out they ate from the tree of knowledge. And but when I'm thinking about it, and when I'm reading that story, I'm picturing okay, if God is walking through the garden, and even making noises, and He's talking to Himself or whistling or whatever the case may be, and I'm thinking, I'm thinking. In my head, I'm picturing somebody walking in an area where you can make noise. So he's probably walking through some high grass or something like that, right? Hmm. And I, when I hear a bush or a tree or they're hiding behind a tree or a bush or whatever the case may be, and they cover themselves up. I'm literally picturing, you know, Mary holding her arm like this to cover up her breasts and using one arm, one hand to cover up her crotch area, you know, and and they're, you know, slumped over trying to, you know, hide themselves and stuff. I'm picturing that in my head. And that means to me, they're literally looking at God in face to face. Well, there's also a text about somewhere in the Bible, I forgot exactly what passage, but it's where they basically give, God is given commandments of how to take bowel movements, take poos. <laughs> and in this sentence, it mentions to bury your, your poo unless, well, less God would step in it. So God would that, come That was in the camp. Bible, right? Yes. So yes, the Jews were scared I, I, that you know, God would step on their feces. You know what? I heard that before, and I could never remember. Or I never, ever thought twice about it. But now that I'm hearing it the second time, where is that in the Bible? I wish I took the note of that. <laughs> Man. I, I, I've heard that well, you could find it on Google like I'm pretty sure you could type it in the uh, only one I remember I think it's somewhere in Ezekiel because I know in Ezekiel 4.12 is where they mention about the baked um, bread on top of human poo and so I think it's somewhere in there so because there's some weird stuff with feces especially human feces or um, animal feces especially with God like punishing people rubbing their faces in feces and stuff like that so very barbaric god and that even nation with the what you mentioned before freaking out about being naked that goes into the idea of gnosticism so this god not all really a god but trapping human souls this idea of them freaking out being naked limited by a physical domain where they would be used to a energy domain a domain of frequency mathematics and energy but yeah you'll be able to find yeah. it on google yeah they, they actually got a lot of stuff on here about that on here but yeah i think it's in ezekiel somewhere it could be in Ezekiel 4. Yeah, there's one in Deuteronomy that tells you, you shall have a place outside the camp and you shall go out to it yep. and you shall have a trial with your tools. And when you sit down outside, you shall dig a hole with it and turn it back and cover up your excrement. Yep. But it doesn't, I don't know which one, which one, what, what, which one did you say that it was for? I think it should be in so, Ezekiel. Because yeah, that's what I mentions about that as well. But not every translation will have about less God would step in it. So you would have to might have to find older translations and stuff like that as well. But some do have it. Mine has it around. But I'm pretty sure the references in Ezekiel they've got a couple couple references to feces or fecal matter. Okay, that's interesting. I've, I I definitely heard that before. I definitely heard that before. Let me see something. I think I found that. Okay, so I think it's Deuteronomy. I think it's actually Deuteronomy, bro. It could be. I know I've read the text. No, that's interesting because that makes a good point. That means God was walking in a physical form. Yep. That means he was in the physical form. Well, there were even sculptures of so-called Yahweh. There were even sculptures of this same God with a penis as well. So there was a lot of different things. There were even ideas of him being both masculine and femme, which is the idea of humans being clayed out in his image. So Adam being formed in by clay. But 
But yeah, even with the notion I mentioned before about with us experiencing itself. So God coming to experience self, coming to know itself. So that really means that man becomes an image of God, not man in the image of the animal, basically. Well, but we are animals though. Human, yeah, humans basically. Are animals. But in a, in a higher sense, like consciousness wise. But yes, we technically are as well. Okay, it says, let me read this. It says, designated place outside. This is Deuteronomy 23, uh, 12 through 14. It says, Des designated place outside. Oh, damn, man. <laughs> designated place outside the camp where you can go to relieve yourself as part of your equipment. Uh, have something to dig with. And when you relieve yourself, dig a hole and cover up your excrement. For the Lord and your God moves about in your camp to protect you and to deliver you, your enemies to you. Your camp must be holy so that he will not see among you anything indecent and turn away from you. Yep. Otherwise, they believed that God would step in poo, they would lose their battles against their enemies. It's interesting because, like I said, even but, but even so, if he was to see it, <laughs> that means he would physically see it. That means he would phys have to physically see it because he would already know. He wouldn't even, they wouldn't even have to say that. You know, God is everywhere. Why yeah. cover it up? Yeah. You know, if, if God is everywhere and he knows all everything, then, you know, you're, you know, you wouldn't have to tell somebody to cover it because they're going to be like, he'll know automatically. Yeah. You know? I would say it would be more developed from the lines of, cleanliness so to stop diseases from spreading and they would have contributed that to god's punishment or something like that as well you know and it passed on from oral tradition right but but you know so to me when i read the bible when i read the mahabharata when i read the popo vu when i read the ancient um sumerian text the coffin text the pyramid text when i read all these ancient texts when i read about these gods i always seem to find that they were originally in the physical form and later on represented later on after they passed away that in their time they were looked up as gods but that's only because that's how because people worship them you know there are people who worship people today who aren't even gods and they yeah. consider them gods yeah, you know, like King John and all that sort of stuff, they believed that he didn't even poo. That was even the yeah, funny thing is they believed that some, not all, some Christians believed that Jesus didn't poo. He was so divine. So, you know, even yeah, with Kim the gods. Jong, you say, yeah, you say Kim Jong-il, right? From yeah. North Korea, right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. People did not think he did that. You know, he was looked up as a god. Yep. You know, a thousand years from now, people are going to believe that he was a God because they, because they, that's what they, and, and, the, and the thing is, is every ancient text that I read, gods can die. Every God can die. Just like a human can die, a God can die, you know? So obviously, um, the, the idea of a God is no different than me looking at you and you looking at me. Yep, basically as well. So it's, again, the notion of we are the universe experiencing itself. Exactly. So we're one, but many. Exactly. Exactly. I think we should end it right there. No worries, Tyrone. That was that was good. I think we should end it right there. I think that's a good ending. I want to stop recording. That was a good ending. That's a good. <laughs> yeah, that was a good ending, bro. <laughs>